Hey everyone, it's Belinda. Today I'm going to be talking about the death of the US steel industry. I visited Pennsylvania just a few weeks ago and I had a great time there. There's so much natural beauty and history and there's just so much to do and see. One of the highlights of my trip was a tour of the Cary Blast Furnaces. It's located about 20 minutes away from downtown Pittsburgh and the tour was conducted by the Rivers of Steel Heritage Foundation. Now the Cary Blast Furnaces were built in 1884 and operated till 1982. All that remains now are just two furnaces located al along the Monongahela River and they're really rare examples of pre-World War II iron making technology. The steel industry in Pennsylvania collapsed in the 70s and 80s and many of them were just dismantled and sold off. The Cary Blast Furnaces originally had six or seven furnaces but only two remain today. I'll link the Rivers of Steel Foundation in the description below. They've done a lot of great work maintaining the site and conducting tours and even making sure the Cary Blast Furnaces become a National Historic Landmark. So go support them in any way you can. The tour was just incredible and you walk through all these abandoned rusted buildings and see all the machinery. You can just imagine what it was like working there back in the day. They still have some of the rails preserved where they brought in iron ore, coal and coke. They also have a rusted crab bucket and these pincers used to pick up raw materials from the rail carts. You also see a couple of lifts into which people would manually shovel iron ore. And of course there's the open hearth furnace. Here iron ore was heated with all the other additives and excess carbon and other impurities were burnt off. This iron ore was then melted down to produce pig iron which was then converted into steel. People would have to manually check this furnace every couple of hours and then tap it in order to get this molten pig iron. Now these open hearth furnaces weren't the most efficient. For every four tons of iron ore and coke and coal that they used, only one ton of pig iron was produced. The carry blast furnaces actually used five million tons of water every day in order to cool these furnaces. At peak production, they were producing 1,200 tons a day. Now these furnaces weren't environmentally friendly. Apart from all the air pollution, there was a lot of asbestos in the building and the ground was contaminated with sulfates and PCBs. Pittsburgh was a highly polluted city because of all the iron and steel production plants. So why was the US steel industry so strong? Well, in World War II, the iron and steel making plants in Germany and in Japan were destroyed, but the ones in the US weren't. So US became the leading producer of steel in the world. In fact, they produced 40% of the world's steel and they employed around 700,000 people in the States. So when Europe and Japan eventually rebuilt their factories, they chose uh, basic oxygen furnaces and continuous casting methods. These were much more efficient and more productive than the open hearth furnaces in the States. Now the big dogs like US Steel and Republic Steel and Bethlehem Steel, they stuck to their outdated methods. They chose to funnel all their profits to owners and shareholders and other investments instead of investing in technology and productivity. Instead of acknowledging all the changes occurring around the world, they chose to just bask in their glory days. As expected, the steel industries around the world took over and it led to the death of the steel industry in the US. China now produces 50% of the world's steel, while the US just produces one tenth of the amount that China does. The decline of the US steel industry was because of lack of innovation and outdated technology. Sure, trade tariffs and union workers were contributing factors, but the main reason was technology. The steel industry just didn't adapt fast enough. Fast forward to today and the steel industry is still lagging behind. And you can't bring back jobs that don't exist anymore. It's been taken over by machines. Take a look at this latest electric arc furnace by Tenova. They have a no man on flow technology, which is pretty self-explanatory. There are no humans involved in the process. The furnace is operated 24 seven from a control room. The sampling is done by a robot. The tapping is automated. 
the scrapyard management is also automated. Video cameras are installed on the robot arms to inspect the furnace. And even the machines are cleaned by a robot. Now this technology is much safer for humans and it increases production levels but it raises an important question of what do humans do when they aren't needed anymore? There's an exponential increase in human population but a rapid decrease in the need for humans and jobs. But that's for another video. So why am I talking about the death of the US steel industry? Well, the parallels between the steel industry and today's construction industry are fascinating. They're both labor heavy, they rely on machines, they both require skilled labor to some level. Just think about it, at the Cary Blast Furnaces in 1982, they were still using pre-World War II technology. In the construction industry, we're still using methods of construction that are 500 years old. We can't ignore or deny the advances in robotic construction occurring all around the world. I've posted a video on 3D printed concrete earlier, I'll link it up here. An entire house, an entire concrete house can be built without any human intervention. I think in the future people are going to be supervisors of machines and we can't deny that. We have to use the steel industry as a precedent and brace for the changes that are coming and try to stay ahead of the technological innovation game. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on automation and building construction. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.